All right, I want to welcome you guys to the 35th annual International Artisan Bakery Expo. <laughs> no, it isn't. It's the 35th International Pizza Expo. And to the very first inaugural, I know that's a double thing, you're not supposed to say that, but the, the, the very first International Artisan Bakery Expo. And uh, I want to welcome all of you here. This is going to be a a regular event from now on, every year we're going to have both Bakery Expo and the Pizza Expo. And uh, how many first year attendees are here? All right, cool, cool. All righty, first timers. All right, I want you all to know that the vast majority of you started either your second or third career when you bought or, or started up your pizzeria or bought your mobile oven or whatever it was. Everybody around you, and, and I know that when you first come in the door, a lot of you think, oh boy, these guys know what they're doing and I'm, I'm brand new at this and oh, I gotta learn. All right, there is solid advice all around you. I'm gonna, 95% of you started this as a second career. And so it's, that's why we have the seminars. That's why I have the demonstrations. But feel comfortable in asking everybody, hey, what do I do with this? When you're walking the floor, there is solid advice all around you, whether they're in a booth, whether there's the guy next to you that's looking at the same product. Nudge them and say, did you ever use that before? Or how does that work? All right, feel free, because that's the key to this show, is that we share information. Um, we leave all the guns and knives at the door. And uh, it, it really works. And for the last 20 years, that's where it's been. It's, it's, it's been spectacular. It grows every single year. Um, the attendance grows every year. The floor space grows every year. So, and then with the, the Artisan Bakery Show that we tacked on here, I know that a lot of pizzolas are beginning to, to plan with bread, you know, and you should. You are bakers. And... Uh, and the bakers that are here, you know, I, I, I got a feeling, A, I know that you're second career folks as well, primarily. And your shops, when they slow down at around 3, 4 in the afternoon, maybe you, you put out a specialty pizza two, three nights a week. Just for a little added income. So keep your eyes open. Go to the seminars. If you've come here with a, with a buddy or a partner, um, don't go to the same seminar together, split up, um, take notes and compare them when you get home or compare them tonight. Um, that's critical. I can't tell you how many people come to me at the end of the, the week and say, yeah, I wish it was just another two days longer because I didn't get to, to go to everything I wanted to see. Split up and, and, and do it that way. Take notes. After that, let's see, if you would just please put your phones on uh, mute. And uh, I would like to introduce you to Jeremy White. He is my editor-in-chief uh, of the best trade magazine in the world, Pizza Today. Thank you very much, folks. Good morning, everybody. I'm Jeremy White. I'm the editor of Pizza Today. Right, really quickly, um, I need everybody to smile. I'm going to tell my mother that all these people came here to see me, so hang on. Yeah, all right, hey. My mother told me I'd be a star one day. Um, really quickly, I'm going to be short and sweet here. I'm going to introduce Mr. Bianco. Pizza Today and Pizza Expo started in 1984, 35 years ago, as Pete said, and the industry has changed so much over these 35 years. Um, Chris Bianco started slinging pizzas professionally, I believe, 1988? That's right. So we opened in 1988, so about four years after us, and... The industry really has grown along with Chris, and, and I was just talking to him, has grown towards Chris. Even 10, 15 years ago, the industry was not as artisan as it is today. So Chris is one of those true guiding lights. He's, he's I can't say enough about him. He's a super great guy. He's a wealth of knowledge, and um, that's why you're all here. So without further, and without further ado, please welcome Mr. Chris Bianco. Thanks, buddy. Thank you. Man, oh man, look at that. I was just hoping I didn't trip on the way out, but uh, 
Wow. Well, here, here it goes. This is a keynote speech. I made a couple keynotes, but uh, I leave them, leave them in my pocket, probably. Um, I, uh, I'm first of all, I'm honored and, and very humbled to be here. I'm, I'm always surprised when people care about uh, anything I have to say. Um, but uh, with that being said, uh, the older I get, um, the more that uh, it does matter. I think what we tell each other. Uh, about uh, looking back, what will we do over again? What will we start? Um, what will we change? Uh, will we keep the same and what will we do more of? And I think uh, um, for anybody who doesn't uh, uh, know about my life, not that uh, anybody should, but uh, I grew up in, in, I was born in the Bronx, New York, and uh, when I was about seven years old, we moved to a little town, uh, Austin, New York, uh, just up the Hudson. and. Uh, you know, uh, my, my, both my parents are born here in the States. Uh, my grandparents are from Italy and Puglia. And, uh, uh, like every kid at some point in their life in my neighborhood, uh, got a job after school at the pizzeria. Uh, it was, uh, a little pizzeria called Aldo's and I was 13 and, and, uh, I remember folding boxes. And I tell this story a lot, if so have you heard it, but, but I remember folding boxes that said, uh, you try the rest, uh, not try the best. And, uh, the reality was it wasn't really the best, and, but it was, it, it was no better than the other best in our neighborhood. We all used the same flowers, bromated, enriched, you know, tomato sauce came in the cans, the mozzarella came in blocks, and, you know, my job, I think I had, a, uh, I, you know, uh, uh, grinded blocks of mozzarella and carried flour from the mixer to the, uh, uh, or the dough from the mixer up to the, up to the walk-in. But, uh, years later, that story, um, I constantly go to because I think that word best is very fleeting and, 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 uh, and, and been somewhat disruptive in my life. Uh, um, I never set out to be, you know, and I don't think anything I've ever done has been better than other things that are optimum. Um, like in our world, I always look, even like in this room, uh, you know, there's people much smarter, talented, definitely better looking uh, than, than, than anything I've, uh, I've been able to done. But... Uh, for whatever reason, I've been very fortunate, and I, I try to take that good fortune um, and share it with others uh, as much as I can. And um, for that, I'm, 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 again, I'm very grateful, and I'm very grateful to anybody that came in uh, to my little shoebox of a space where, uh, um, when I finally moved to Phoenix, uh, I'll jump in the story now. It'll be fast, so it won't be that painful, I promise. But. Um, but I, I, when I moved to Phoenix, Arizona, I left New York uh, uh, in 1980, 1985. And um, uh, I love New York, but I just wanted to go anywhere that was, uh, you know, other than a few trips to Italy when I was a kid, uh, I didn't get to travel too much. Uh, um, but uh, for some reason, uh, I ended up in Phoenix, Arizona. I didn't know a soul. I started a little business out of my apartment making fresh mozzarella and pasta. Um, uh, and I'd sell to, uh, to a couple of Italian restaurants there in town. And I started a little business also making pizza, like, uh, grandma style at people's houses. And, yeah. um, and then one, uh, one of my, one customer I was doing that, uh, a guy was from Venice named Marino Godi had a, um, when he was building his house, um, the, the workers built the wood oven outside. And, uh, and I said, Hey man, can I, uh, do these pizzas in the, in the wood oven outside for this party? And uh, I did them, and uh, people, a couple of people liked them that was there, and, and one guy on the grocery store said, hey, man, if you ever want to, you know, uh, you know, get serious about this, uh, I'll lease you 200 square feet in the back of this grocery store. And uh, in 1988, uh, I opened up the Pizza Bianco in that little, in that little space. And, uh, you know, from there, um, you know, the philosophy, uh, though evolving, has been really similar, which was studying uh, what makes good things good. And what I mean by that is not just, you know, the best ingredients or the highest quality, which should be a, a given to make good things. They can still be incredibly humble, but it's, it's it, it, you know, finding that tipping point of compromise, you know, um, which is incredibly important. Um, you know, I, I got into the, the tomato business by accident. I didn't ever, you know, uh, want to be in it. Uh, it, it, it. It evolved from a relationship, which, um, you know, um, my partner in that one, a guy named Rob DiNapoli, came to me one day, showed up at my pizzeria, and he had great tomatoes, and 
uh, um, I was already using great ones from Italy, but um, we were able to, uh, I don't know, do something that we thought uh, kind of like wine. Um, in, my, in my cellar, uh, in the restaurants, there's wines from all the best wine regions in the world. And the best, no better than the other best, whether it was from, you know, Chianti or, or Sicily or uh, in Spain or, or Argentina or Napa or Sonoma. And I was just thinking, well, why shouldn't, you know, tomatoes or grain be of that same way? So sometimes the one thing I like to say here is, first of all, I love Italy. And even though I'm a, a somewhat of a localist, I'm definitely a globalist. And I find food at the point of compromise. I, I still, you know, my restaurants run through about six wheels of Reggiano a week. Um, and I love it, and it can come. It can come to us uncompromised and fantastic and delicious. I still love some of the best San Marzano tomatoes, and I love the, the tomatoes we grow in Northern California, which are special as well. We hope that they're on a shelf next to some of the best ones. So when you open, whether it's a bottle of wine, a can of preserved tomatoes that are grown in good earth, uh, organically, that that you, you're not just tasting something that you know both are delicious. But when I go to someone's home or I go to someone's house, um, I want to see what they serve me, not so much what they flew in and they FedExed in. And, 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 and sometimes there's things that happen. I have no judgment. I'm saying I just wanted to, to give you something of this place, wherever that place was. Like, and uh, I'm, I'm still moved by that. I think, you know, sometimes as chefs, if we're ever invited to someone's home, you know, sometimes, oh, I'm nervous cooking for you. I'm like, well, uh, you know, if it's a, you know, a, a piece of toast and, and you make it, you know, with love, I mean, we're, we're grateful to have it. And, and I know of all of you in our industry, we rarely even get to eat sitting down. So that's a treat as well. But, um, you know, at the end of this, I'm happy to answer, uh, you know, or not even the end of it. In a little bit, I'll, I'll do some Q&A because I, I do, you know, uh, many of you I've been fortunate enough to bump into over the years and I, and I try to answer most any question that you have, you know, uh, because the questions I had starting out, I had no forum when I opened up. I had no uh, pizza expo to go to. I had, you know, uh, I learned things by burning things. You know, I learned things by, by you know, you know, tasting what I what I wanted to, uh, like understanding crispy. Even our young chefs now, it's more of a, um, you know, cooking school is great. Everything is everything is great. But I think the, the best investment you can make in yourself is, you know, fuck what I think. What do you think? What do you like? What, you know, where do you go where you have something that has the, like, if it's pizza or bread or pasta, what characteristics do you like? Whether, whatever style, whether it's, you know, Neo Neapolitan, Neapolitan, uh, Grandma, uh, uh, Roman, I mean, they're all fantastic. So what ultimately the best for you is what's, what's the best for you and what you enjoy the best. But I think there's been one thing I, I also in this, in this forum, and the one reason when I was uh, kind enough to, to come speak to you is, uh, um, you know, uh, the one thing I'd love to see uh, in our industry is, uh, is uh, working together more and, um, you know, sharing as much as we can together. It's, it's the only way forward. There's no other, you know, there's no islands in our industry. You know, when we do a space or... We open a restaurant or, you know, I'm always looking at the community around us. Who is it affecting? Who's bread? Are we taking bread off anyone's table? Are we hurting anything? Are we, are we helping the farmers that grow in that region have a form for what they grow? So, you know, I look at places, or, or, you know, now, and like it's speeding up as, you know, 30, 31 years later since I opened, how do we, um, you know, some of the projects that we've, we've done, uh, you know, the last few years are based on, the relationships that I have um, and with farmers that grow grain or millers that transform grain and now at the end unit at the baker, uh, baker's level. And, you know, there's been a lot of things, too, as far as uh, when we start out in our industry for people starting out. It's, it's, I had to do a lot of things back in the day uh, myself because there was no other way. You know, I had a lady, you know, in the 80s, Bernice, uh, um, that uh, grew basil and arugula for me, and and, and you know started growing herbs, and you know, uh, and it was it was such a a, a gift. But uh, we had to make you know our own sausage, mozzarella, you know, uh, uh, you know, drive to the farmers markets. Get, but I think what's what the way forward now is in your community, 
if the guy across the street, you know, um, has a great butcher shop, well, maybe you, you together, you can buy a pig from the farmer that needs to sell him, and he can make your sausage, and you can concentrate on, on your, your dough production or fermentation times or taste profiles. So it's not so much, we don't have to start a conversation with I so much. I'll tell you right now, I never invented a damn thing in my life. But I did work on the things that I loved. And uh, I try to never let people down. My family, first and foremost. And the other thing about this is, is I've always cooked for my peers. Like, uh, I wanted the respect of my peers. Um, Like, um, you know, I think sometimes we, we go through some parts of our life that, you know, we say, like, I don't care. I got nothing to prove. I've done this. I, I, I don't have that attitude. I've got everything to prove. Every relationship that I have um, uh, is, is, is everything. You know, I'm in the relationship business. If you ask me what business I'm in, it's not the pizza business. Yes, I love pizza, but not more than the other things I love. It's, it's, it, it's not worth it anything, if all of it isn't worth something. Like, if, if my relationship with my farmers, you know, my relationship with my customers that come in, you know, their first date, their last date, I've served people their last meal, you know, or maybe their first meal in my life. And, and you know, I, n I never take that casually. And uh, it's, um, it, it's just, uh, you know, I, sometimes I don't know what people, what people want when they come into this, this business to this industry. You know, we make a beeline for being the best. We, they go to competitions, which are another segment which I, I guess I gotta be really careful about, but I, I, I feel I need to say it. Like, uh, um, and, and I know there's a lot of competitions here and I think everyone that does them is fantastic and, and uh, there's no judgment. But I will say, in our industry, not in pizza, but all of it, uh, I did, a, I, I, about 25 years ago, I was invited to judge a, a pie contest in, in, in the Arizona State Fair. And I was like, oh, that'll be cute. That'll be a nice story. And I went there, and there was these people. They're like, that bitch is using frozen blueberries. You can't vote for her, that one. one. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, I, I had no idea. This was a, you know, and I was like so uncomfortable. And I, it was before cell phones, you know, back then, uh, or at least in mine. And I think I was saying, I think I hear a fax machine. I got to go. And I left before the end of it. And I think there's a lot of, uh, um, you know, what I do in my life is definitely subjective, you know? And my idea of the optimum and the best is inclusive. It's like whatever your spirituality is, you know, most of uh, the heavens are inclusive. They're not islands. So it would, be, it would be, make a lot of sense that if you lived your life in a certain way, you know, um, that, you know, and you, you, you live to certain standards, they would all be invited to that party. And I look at that in our industry, that you know some of the great ones in our industry, and there's way too many for me to list, but even for me to be invited to their party, to this party, it's to me an incredible honor. There's one, I'm not isolated from that. I'm no better than it, for sure. But um, I will say that, that um, I'm proud to be standing beside them. I'm proud to be invited to that party. So I think as we go, and we get younger, I mean, or, or as the industry gets younger, I think it's important that we, 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 we stay tethered to them or them to us. So we make a bigger piece of heaven. We make a bigger piece of uh, worth, and we don't try to separate and keep burning down the last bridge that these guys did this, and we do that. And we, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot of changes going on in the industry. One of the things that will be going on right now is, you know, you'll see some amazing millers here and, and uh, you know, people doing uh, amazing things. And I, I hope we all um, find our relationship and support those people. Maybe before we have to start our own, maybe it's right in front of us, the, the connection that we need. They, ha they have the same ethos, the same, re the same intensity, and, and we're better together. And, and, and that, that I find is always, always the case. And, um, you know, it, it, the competition part of, of of our industry, you know, like someone that, you know, that uh, we're gonna get a blue ribbon and be better than someone else. I think in, in, in some cases it's made us prepare for things that are singular. You come to my restaurant, you're gonna find anything hanging on the wall, it's of art, you know, that, that people did with love. There's no accolades, there's no nothing. 
Those are for other people. They're not for me. Whatever, uh, you know, whatever I got, it was, you know, it was I kept my head down, went to work. You know, when I was lucky enough to win a James Beard Award, I didn't even know. I remember my mother had a James Beard book on bread book in my house, but I didn't even know what it was. I never did. I never did, you know, uh, an event for them. I never spent a nickel. I never spent a nickel on advertising in my restaurant ever. I felt if I had to tell you, you know, just like my when I finally got married, if I, you know, if I had to ask my wife if she loved me, it might not be a good sign. So, so, in that same in that same way, and not any, on the, for all the advertisers out there, I don't mean that, the, that you guys are invaluable at all. But I think in our industry, when it starts out, you know, things always tell us what they want to be or or their worth. They'll find that way. They'll find it. And and I think sometimes we we want to you know we want to uh, you know like now like I said, 31 years in my in my business, I know. Our, our product is better than it was 31 years ago, 10 years ago, five years ago. And not so much because, you know, when people say to me, uh, hey, Chris, you don't, make, you don't make every pizza anymore. I never made every pizza. Even though I physically sit in front of the oven and put it in the, the fiery hole for, you know, 18 straight years, I had a little bit of a health issue that, that it was a blessing to me because it freed me up to gain the perspective. You know, my brother Marco, uh, God bless him, uh, he, he's been making all my dough for the last 20 years. We used to, you know, uh, first 10 years or so, we mix it all by hand in a big, you know, big steel bowl that was tucked in above an old, you know, uh, uh, garbage bin. Some of you guys, I know Peter Reinhardt actually made uh, dough in that with me one time years ago. And um, uh, I was afraid to, you know, to, to move to a spiral mixer one day. I wanted one, I never could afford one. But uh, when I finally got enough money for it, I was afraid to change because, oh, my God, I was going to change everything. I handmade it. There was a perception. And then I found out when I finally got it that making things by hand are incredible reference. And I, and I, I, I suggest that everyone gets their hands deep into, you know, to, to any food that they're doing, whether it's whatever. I mean, uh, uh, whether it's making a chicken, uh, uh, you know, probably uh, 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 transitioning one from light to death to plucking it is a, is a revelation. But in, um, in, in anything, I think it's uh, uh, just breaking things down to their, 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 their simplicity and their source. And, and, then we, and then we find out, like, what do, we, what do we do with any of this when we're physically, um, you know, I'm 56 years old now, you know, and uh, I mean, I like to think I still have some gas in the tank and I still love to jump in the kitchen. I still love to pull some shifts because I need it. They don't need me, you know, my team physically. Like, you know, we still, we'll still go in. I'll, I'll still go to the, the farmers and check on grain. We'll still go to the mills and make sure, work with our, our farmers and millers to make sure that things are optimum. And I'll still, you know, have my hands in things every day. But I think, how do we do it? I think for the people that are in my uh, age bracket, I guess, or, or been in, 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 in the, the business for a number of years, how do we transition? You know, I mean, we watch, you know, one day, uh, you know, you, you get drafted by the Yankees and you, you throw 100 miles an hour and all of a sudden you're, you're 35 and you're throwing 94 and, and you're 40 and all of a sudden you're saying, fuck, I got to be a third base coach, you know, <laughs> or, or I got to buy the team or I got to become a broadcaster, but I'm not that, you know, my, my belly in the, in the tight baseball suit's looking ridiculous, you know, so I think it's, it's a very, you know, it's an important conversation for people to have with yourself. With yourself, I know I had, um, uh, um, you know, uh, the little health scare I had, which was uh, I had asthma for a long time, and you know, just uh, just exasperated by uh, like a baker's lung, just by you know, never wearing a mask, you know, always being uh, uh, just in it, and and um, um, it was uh, I'm I'm incredibly grateful for that experience to be able to look at like what else do I have to give to our industry other than to make sure that I can, you know, that, you know, probably my favorite thing is still shaping, you know, though if I did anything else, just that kind of cadence that we get and just my eyes closed and just doing it. And, and even, uh, uh, you know, today when I look, you know, inside an oven and, and I see that just that fire rolling across the dome, it's incredibly comforting. It allows, it allows me to kind of check out for a little bit and check in and, and, and I think, um, uh, but I think using that uh, and finding, I can, still, I can still go there, I can still go to that place, but how do we, 
How do we how do we help our industry? How do we make things better than we found them? And I think one of the things that I that I hope to achieve is 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 uh, kind of like when I said, you know, you tried the rest, you tried the best. Well, what if we can together we can make a pantry that our kids and their kids can be really proud of. We can find labels with transparency and provenance of place. We can start to, I make my own fresh pasta, we make our own bread, but if we go down to the deli and you know it's a bag of you know semolinas under a fluorescent light for two years, you're better off getting the, the you know the, the pasta shoot to the dry pasta that was made optimum from one of the great producers um, uh, around the world. So I think it's it's you know the conversations today are are are, are different. I mean, there's a lot of things in our world, and I'm definitely not getting into any politics, but I know we can. I know we need to get along better. I know that I've worked hard in my life on relationships that, again, that are everything. I know that you matter to me unequivocally. I know that everyone that I, that, I, that came, ever came into my store came today. I pray that I don't disappoint you. I pray that I've created an expectation and we've at least met it, if not exceeded it. Those are the things that, you know, um, you know, I look at and, and like, you know, looking back, uh, what would I do over again? I, I think one of the things I, I would say to young to young people starting industry, or maybe even uh, the old guys like me, is one one thing I would do over again is uh, I would try to seek the balance in my own life that I that I that I uh, that I confronted when I was making a salad and a pasta bowl of pasta or any dish where we were about salinity, acid, salt, fermentation time, too much, too little, smoke. Uh, but we looked at our life again. We're eating, standing up. We're going home in the middle of the night. You know, we're. You know, we're driving out. We got boxes sliding on from the farmer's market. You know, uh, you know, the, the, somebody left the walk, the walk and went down. Everything's ruined. You know, somehow in our life that, that, uh, there was, uh, it's almost like, uh, I always had a vision. It's like, you know, Vivaldi's playing in the dining room, but in the back room, it's like a, you know, a, a war zone. And, and, and I, I try as much as my team now is, is have environments where there's hopefully some light. You know, uh, uh, also natural light and also in conversations. You know, I would say uh, no matter what I say here today, uh, it's ultimately how I make you feel more than what I, I tell you. And, you know, I, I can send love letters every day to my wife, but I, but I make her feel unloved or my children. That's that's the reality. You know, so those are the things that, that, that I that I that I work on. and I stress is how we make each other feel. And uh, I've been incredibly uh, fortunate to have. Uh, um, uh, a metaphor uh, um, to have uh, being pizza, you know, kind of a send a love letter uh, maybe 300 times or so a night to, to, to people to at least uh, um, extend a lot of journeys in there, a lot of, you know, um, there's a lot of hands in it. And I think the, the I part that I was talking about, um, it's, uh, it's, you know, it's a kind of a lonely existence sometimes where you don't really, you don't, you don't know what, uh, you know, tomorrow's gonna look like. You know, we look at, you know, we look at, um, the business side of things today, which is a much longer discussion, but I hope we all have it one day. I hope we have it with people that don't land to start, you know, calling us, hey, I got a great space for you. It's awesome. We're gonna rebuild it. We're gonna do it. TI, I'm gonna give you this. And all of a sudden it's like, oh my God, that's awesome. And free rent for it. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, when the deal shakes out, it's like, I'm gonna kill myself for, you know, the meat on the bone left is minimum. And I think those realities when, you know, the, the people that come into your store, that, you know, that there's always a shiny new object, you know, to lure you away, you know, instead of like, I think we always know our path. You know, you guys definitely know, uh, I would say, I'm probably sure most everybody in this room knows more about business than I do. Um, but I do know what I want. I do know what's important to me. I do know that I want to look people in the eye and I want to be proud of what I do. And, um, and that continues, uh, uh, you know, every day. And, um, so one of the, one of the, I think one of the, the, the projects I'm doing right now is, uh, we just opened a, a project in, in Los Angeles, uh, with an old friend of mine, a great baker, Chad Robinson from Tartine. Uh, I met I met Chad about uh, I don't know 25 years ago. There was a great oven builder uh, named Alan Scott. that was an old friend of mine uh, since passed away. He's probably looking 
down now at this pizza expo uh, and all. But um, he, uh, uh, Chad was working with, with Alan. And, um, uh, you know, about a year later, um, Chad and his wife Liz opened up an epic bakery in Point Reyes called Tartine. And um, we always talked about maybe doing a project together and, 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 and taking some of those small box philosophies of standing in front of an, uh, an oven and shoving bread in and out or, or, or pizza in and out and, and what happens. And um, now years later, uh, we've done this kind of massive project, which is, seems, I think at first glance, far away from that. But I think there's two sides to our world right now. And it's, uh, um, there's the small mom and pop, which I still have and I love and I cherish. But I think there's, a, there's another side of, of our world which needs to be uh, um, um, uh, accountable, which is people that can serve bigger rooms. We do all deserve to have a better cup of coffee and a better loaf of bread and a better anything. We just need to get a bigger pot if we can afford the bigger pot. So we just say, oh, we're at a wedding. Uh, we're going to have rubber chicken. And it's, I mean, it's, it's, you know, we should have, you know, we should, if we put our heads together and we work towards, you know, um, we can get more acreage. We can, we can get farmers to grow better grains and, and better mills and get bigger ovens. And we can, and we can feed more people. And that project, um, has been, uh, uh, somehow made me appreciate both sides of it, um, uh, immensely. And uh, yeah, if you ever get out there, uh, we hope to visit. We're doing, that one we're doing is it, it caused a little bit of uh, uh, controversy, I guess, there. Just like we were doing, um, uh, one of the things we're doing, these flatbreads. And I hate that word, flatbread. Anyway, it's just a stupid freaking word. But I felt in that case, in this case, um, it was really a take on Chad's uh, country dough, a porridge bread. So it's like 105% hydration. Um, um, you know, um, uh, a sourdough, uh, uh, you know, definitive characteristics of bread. It's essentially we do them in couches and um, they're just basically flipped out like bread and just look basically flattened. So I was like, you know what, if there was ever a word for this, I mean, if ever there was a time for this, I was really, you know, to give homage or give credit to, in this case, a collaboration of, you know, something with a pizza sensibility to something that was actually bread. So, and not the pieces of bread. That's a different conversation. I'm not going to get into that now. But, but, but I think um, uh, I, I don't really care what you call things at the end of the day, um, but I care what's in them. And uh, that goes back to, um, to people and, and places. You guys want to answer some questions? You, want, you, guys, uh, you, want, you, want, you guys have any questions, Q&A? Uh, I'm happy to answer any questions that you guys have about anything. But um, it's, uh, uh, it's really, uh, you know, it's... it's um, it's, you know, standing up in front of all of you, I got a lot of things running through my mind that I crumpled up a bunch of paper, and I thought if I just was able to stand in front of you and tell you a little bit of my story, tell you a little bit what I, what I, um, what I'm, what I've been through, what I'm going through, and where I want to go. I think there's a lot, um, uh, I think there's a lot there that we can all use, which is not something to, to mimic, uh, uh, cause like I said, I had, I had a lot of maybe turbulence in my own life along the way, uh, waiting, you know, um, you know, uh, going back to, uh, you know, when I got married and I had kids, it, it really changed everything for me as far as the balance part, you know, um, they, uh, um, they're my most important ingredients in, in, in everything now. And, um, so I, uh, I, uh, yeah, I'm here for, for you guys. So anything that I can do, anything that I can answer, anything that, you know, uh, I, I've tried to, you know, uh, you know, years ago, I mean, I used to have people sift through my garbage, you know, to see what flour and tomatoes we were using. I'm like, dude, you can just take it back. You know, this is essential milling or we're going to produce those. Or, you want these tomatoes here? You can buy them. I don't give a shit, whatever. You know, like, and I think there was all these secrets. Like, the secret is there's no secret. The secret is, you know, that we wake up with a dedication and a commitment to do something excellent, you know? And why would we want to share that with other people? Why we would we not, you know, like, like you know, uh, you know, in this case, uh, I'm fine to live in a glass house. I always thought that 
if I told you it would serve me better than telling you it's a secret sauce, you know, you ain't got to worry about it. I'm like, all right, well, maybe, maybe, maybe so. So I think those are the, those are the, those are the, some of the things as we, as we move forward is, you know, uh, hopefully, uh, my business for whatever that it's worth, uh, um, has tried to provide a, 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 a template for others, you know, or, or a transparency to others. And I think there's a lot of people in our country right now that they've taken them farther than I ever could imagine. And I think, uh, I say too, I think if I ever raise the bar a little bit, I think, uh, you're going to see a lot of people dancing on that bar and, 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 you know, that are smart, they know how to Google and, and do things. And, and, uh, uh, I'm very excited for our, our, our next generations. I'm not one of those pining for the good old days. I mean, they were good. There were some, there were some good days, but I think the best days are today because we have all those good memories. And now we are armed with the possibilities and we're armed with um, uh, the responsibility uh, yeah, to, to continue um, everything that we, we built. Um, um, and then we look at each and every one of our streets, our towns and our villages to make sure that we're, we're serving it um, to the greatest and highest good of all. So do you guys want me to answer some questions? Where's my team here? My guys. Oh, there we go. I'm ready. Let's do it. Okay. No mathematics. So that's the only rule. <laughs> uh, forget it then. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, first of all, Chris, thanks for being here and speaking. It's incre always incredible to hear from you. But I have a question about your pizza, which is the style that you started making 30 years ago is now, only now recently, becoming a popular style around the country. You're from the Bronx, from a New York pizza background and you're making pan pizzas in Phoenix. What experiences along the way led you to end up making this wood-fired pizza that's not a Neapolitan pizza that's kind of its own thing altogether? That's a fine question. That's a fine question. Um, thank you. Uh, I think, you know what, it was more of, um, I think it's a lot like, like music in a way. Um, I think uh, I'm a big fan of music and a pretty diverse, uh, a diverse fan of music. So. The one thing I say is um, um, I love many styles of pizza, Neapolitan being one of them. You know, my um, my friend Anthony Mangieri, when he did Una Pizza Napolitana, I was blown away, and I'm still blown away by his commitment to excellence and his commitment to people that, uh, you know, uh, maybe they never was able to go to Naples, and they did something that, like, was really a study in uh, exact measure and, and, and ethos and philosophy. I just wanted to take my own street, I guess, which was, I wasn't from Naples. You know, my family's from Puglia. I'm born in the Bronx. I'm living in Westchester. I ended up in Phoenix. Anything other than a hybrid would be, for me personally, an injustice or, 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 or um, uh, misleading. So what I try to do is find, where did I find inspiration? I found inspiration um, uh, in the romance of a wood fire. I found inspiration in, you know, uh, maybe, in my neighborhood, you know, the pizza guy always had a white t-shirt and, and could drink all the coke he wanted. He could always get a slice. Pretty cool job. You know, so that was inspiring. You know, pizza might be a decent career. And then as I delved deep into that, I think there was also the alchemy of what was going on with, uh, you know, uh, you know, other movements outside of pizza, like Jean-Louis Pelladine at the Watergate. He was one of the first, you know, uh, great French chefs that was using, you know, uh, um, you know, uh, lamb from Virginia or, or local products and uh, the movement that was at Zuni Cafe or Chez Panisse on the West Coast, you know, that we're really looking at um, um, what could we do that was optimum? What could we do that was um, of this place? So there was a lot of, I think on the, on the food side, there was, there was examples of hybrids based on inspiration. Like you've been to Provence, you've been to Italy. I think there's always two schools of thought to emulate it, which is totally noble and awesome, and or to say, um, I, I'm gonna pay an homage to the best of my ability, and with that homage, um, you know, like music, I'm gonna add maybe a few riffs that make sense to me. Like, like if you say, like I was saying earlier, if, you've, if you find that, you say, oh, I love this pizza, but for me, I'd like it a little crispier, or maybe it's too wet to my tasting, or not, not that it's bad, but it's just like we have different cars because they serve different needs and we have different tastes. So if I say, you know, I want something at, you know, like if I say for me, like base floor temperature, I find base floor, not ambient temperature, but
But I find po- like above 750, is this mic on? Oh, above 750 might give me a little bit more acrid flavor than I like. Not that if I can't move in, I can't deep dance on off it, but I find like somewhere in that 730 range, 725 up to 750 range, that floor temperature will be more bread like. Is this mic working? Yeah, okay. I'm oh, sorry. So I think it's, it's finding what you want to achieve, you know, crispy, uh, uh, you know, um, flavor profiles, fermentation wise. You know, if you want to, you know, like there's a lot right now on chipping points of fermentation. Like for me, like I did a little book, you know, and it, 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 it's a very basic book. And it, in the beginning, it tells you, well, yeah, you could do a pizza in four hours, three hours, and it's fine. You can take that one and still bump it to 72 hours, and it's going to change profiles, 90 hours. They're all of worth. You know, it's for you to find the balance of, like, I'm five days, I'm six days. Well, for me, like, maybe in a perfect world, if I'm going 36 hours, that might be a tipping point for a marinara. Or if, if I might be able to do something, you know, full sourdough for me, whole grain, that I can add a stilton or, or a, you know, a different acid that will really hold up through fermentation. So I think it's just it was identifying what I wanted to do, I guess, what I liked, and also to disarm people in a way, and myself from having to uh, uh, pretend that they were anywhere else but in our house. So um, I don't know if that makes any sense. I hope it does. It's fun, right? It's good stuff. Right here, Chris. All right. Ready. Right here, Chris. He's got one for you. Oh, I'm ready. Oh, I'm sorry, brother. I was right here. I was looking at you. I got you. What does authenticity mean to you, and has that, has that changed over time? What does authenticity mean to me? I guess it's personal. I think being authentic is being authentic to yourself first, always. Um, now, emulation is different, you know, like for me, like to emulate something. But being authentic is to be only authentic to the principles uh, and be another, look another human being in the eye and just say, I tried my best. It came from good intention. Intention is a big word on my mood board. It's still probably the first word that I put. What's your intention? Every conversation I have, there's never one without a contention, whether it's worth the bathroom or, you know, um, anything. Starts with me being clear on the say I love you or whatever. It might be, you know, so I think the, the intention. What do I want to do when I open a restaurant? I intend to open 500 or I want to do this one place and I want to live above it. I'm going to have a good life. I want to move on an island. You know, so the intention um, like what, what happens if it doesn't make it? What happens if it does make it? Um, so I think uh, setting an intention uh, is personal and it should only be, you know, uh, uh, you know, for you, I think. So that's, that's intention, I guess, for me. Yes. How's it going? Cool, man. Good. My name's Giuseppe. I'm Giuseppe, a- I like that. I'm 22. I opened my first pizzeria about two months ago. Nice. Hey. I'm just wondering if you have any advice for me just starting out. You know what, Giuseppe? I got some good advice for you. <laughs> um, just learn to enjoy it. You know, I think that's the one thing is I think learn to every day as much as you can. Uh, kiss a baby, you know, get a kiss from a baby. Um, uh, figure out what you want from it at the end of that. You know, like uh, um, we live in a world where we swipe left and it sound bites and things happen in a minute. It doesn't happen in a minute sometimes. I mean, sometimes we're lucky it does and, you, and it's a hit record overnight, but maybe you'd have never read another hit record. So I think just if you have something you believe in, keep believing in it, you know? And then the other part of it is, um, it took me a long time, you know, I, I, I'm not proud of it, but I dropped out of school 10th grade, I went to work, I made some mistakes business-wise that I didn't just understand business. Get smart people around you that understand business. Romance is romantic, and I, I believe in it, but business is business, you know, and so get people that understand what it means, you know, that uh, be, beware of them, which is don't worry about it. You know, like, uh, worry, worry about those things, like, you know, structure of your lease, how long, how much, what triple net is or not, you know. So I think I'm, I guarantee your food's delicious. I'm sure it is. But the things that, uh, you know, I watched a lot of great restaurants in my career close. And very rarely were they about 
it, the food not being good enough. So uh, I guess the advice is uh, stay true to yourself, get a great team of support around you, and uh, um, listen to your inner voice as much as you can. And then talk to the people that, that matter to you most and keep them super close. You know, not so much uh, like the Godfather, keep your enemies closer. Uh, but keep, keep, keep those, uh, keep, keep the people that you love super close to you and serve them. And, uh, and the last part of it is, is, you know, it's, you know, identify your audience. There's a, there's a, there's a big pizza pie. You know, when I started, I, I, you know, there was a lot of big, you know, uh, I'm, none of my family's in the, in the pizza business or the restaurant business. I remember telling them like, oh, Jesus, you know, the, the, the statistics are horrible. Two out of three clothes and, I mean, yeah, but one makes it. Maybe we'll be lucky and maybe I'll be lucky. But, but I think I, I identified the smallest sliver of the pie. And I try to serve, to this day, I try to serve that sliver. And um, I found that sliver is the one that's got me through uh, uh, different presidents, uh, wars, uh, um, uh, all types of, of different things. That, that audience is the one I built my relationship with. So it wasn't like you had to please everybody. So uh, please yourself, please your family, and, uh, and, uh, and that's it, and have fun. God bless you. All right, good luck. All right. Yes. Uh, thank you for being here, first of all. Um, every time I've eaten at one of your restaurants, starting from Pizzeria Bianco back in the day when there was a four-hour wait, which was a great time, by the way, and thank you for it's putting... It's easier now, by the way. We're home for lunch, but I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, first of all. I and mean... thank you for putting the bar next door, too. That, yeah, was, that was great. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, but I've noticed that every ingredient always has an elevated nature. And, and so I know that you have, obviously, a, a very specific approach towards how you treat each ingredient and how you coax the most flavor out of all of them. And that's what always stood out to me, um, amongst other things, uh, eating at Pizza or Bianco, um, was just how great every ingredient tasted. And I'm curious what your approach is on that. Well, that's very kind. You used one of my favorite words. Uh, the other one on the mood board would be coax, coaxing things, um, not against their will. But um, uh, I found one of the things I remember working at Aldo's Pizzeria, you know, in 1977 or whatever it was, um, the pizza was fine. It was fine. But God forbid if you ordered anything other than the pizza. You know, they came in the metal bowls, the paper top, everything slid around, the salad, the pasta, whatever it was. And I just, I felt that um, with every singular ingredient, you know, it didn't, it wouldn't have to be the most expensive. Like I still to this day, I've got nothing against, you know, truffle oil or truffles. But I wanted to use ingredients that were leaning to the humble side of, 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 uh, of, of life, I guess. So it wasn't their, their decadence, I would say, that, that hopefully you would appreciate. It was more about like, oh my God, there's a lemon on this tree that's fucking been hanging for like right for a month and I'm going to wait and wait and wait. And, you know, uh, and, and you know, the, you know uh, that along with this single variety, Paranzano oil from Puglia is going to make the most amazing dressing. And that simplicity, I think, Putting those two things of, of utmost perfection in balance, it has you more, I think, see things. I always saw myself as more of a producer, like music producer, like putting things in. They're already perfect in balance. Like there's no, there's any, nothing that I did that wasn't already perfect, you know, in my mind. So my job became illuminating their own, just like with people, like with my kids now. I mean, I have three kids that I'm blessed with uh, that I look at them and I, I, how do I illuminate their greatest good? How do I, how do I find them to find, thank God they have a lot of my wife in them, you know, we don't need any more of me. But, but how do we find um, on the, for instance, we're talking about pizza, so the pizza should be of standard and, and delicious and great. But I think, in my opinion, we were able to, um, we were able to put a lot of focus into whether it was the antipasto, which came with five vegetables, all from our local farmers, and handle them specifically, whether they were raw, wood roasted, um, um, uh, or grilled, uh, or whatever. They came on your plate. It was each one in provenance of place, of farmer, 
uh, without putting it all over the menu, without anything else. I mean, the, 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 I try to really keep the, the you know, you know, uh, creek sided, watercrest, Neil, picked by Bobby, three o'clock, and all that. That's it, I don't want to put it all over the menu. But I'm always saying, if you want to go there, I'm happy to go there, you know, if, for his ingredients or whatever. I'm happy to talk about it. But I don't want to, like, knock you over the head. I, ne I needed you. I, I mean, I hope that you would discover it. Like, I remember when, you know, chefs would come in, they would, they would look at our pantry, you know, they were like, God, I hate to see your food costs. And I was like, me too. Thank God I can't figure it out, you know. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but um, so I think it was, I think the, the, the philosophy, again, and that was taking everything, like, the, the beeline wasn't just on pizza, even though in my first place it was just pizza, antipasto, salads, and usually one or one dessert, um, that I would take each one of them. Like, it was like in the thing, like, I didn't have, I didn't never saw myself with a, with a, a catalog of greatest hits. I said, you know, this is something that I can, I can, I want to get my head around the things that I do. And I want to put out the things that I think make sense. And, uh, you know, kind of like kindergarten, play well with others. You know, those are things that are important to me today. So ingredients, the totality of a, of a menu. You know, I wanted to make sense from end to end. Even if it was only a few things on it, it gave you things that make sense to you. Like, um, um, and that's what, I, that's what I hoped. And so it was more of, a, um, a, if it was salinity or sea salt, well, it, when we put it on, it might be important. So when we dress the salad, like we'd study that, like with our team, like, okay, well now, I'll, you know, the dressing has salinity, but we'll make sure it's dressed and we'll finish it with Malden or, or uh, you know, um, a specific sea salt, you know, because we wanted that texture, but we didn't want too much. Don't put black pepper because we don't want to think it was sandy or dirty. You know, so I think those things became studies, maniacal studies of things. Well, like, oh, it's a simple salad, which it was of, you know, we do with one salad of, of uh, uh, when watermelon is like in the desert is just teeming and delicious and, and, and perfect. And we also have fennel at that time. It's really young and we do a salad with just fennel, watermelon, uh, holy parsley, which I love. All grow by the same farmer, all harvest the same time. And so those three ingredients, you know, kind of the, the, what grows together goes together mentality. So all I had to do is, is dress it with um, its own juice. So I would juice, just, I'd take, I'd scrape just the inside of the rind, just like all the juice from it. Or, or if it sees just the seedy part, I'd get the juice from it. And I would just balance acid of a lemon and the sweetness of a watermelon juice. And I would have it chilled enough so you could have an expression. Like, what did I want you to do? If you looked at it, you said, fuck, this guy served me a little puddle the salad, even dress it right as a puddle of it, it's watery. But without me telling you, I hope I'd see you like, like get a spoon or just tip the bowl to your mouth and drink it and it would make a great cocktail, like in your mind. So I think there was a lot of little things that I hope that you discovered, you know, and, and not that I had to tell you because maybe you just thought it sucked and that's valid, I guess. If you didn't dig it, it that, that would be the case. But there was always an intention, you know, getting back to the intention. Like there was always an intention uh, to be authentic to, to what I believed in and, and what I still believe in. But, uh, cool. Thank you. <laughs> uh, anybody else? Yes. Oh, here it comes. Here it comes. How you doing? Hey, I just yeah, wonder if you could speak a little bit on your, uh, your fresh house-made mozzarella. It's amazing. Right. Um, <laughs> sometimes I feel like I can't get mine um, soft enough or consistently soft. Right. Can you just speak on some of your keys on making fresh mozzarella. Yeah, you know what, the, 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 one of the keys for me, like depending on the, your curd that you use, um, I think a lot of, uh, when I, when I uh, started pulling mozzarella, it was uh, Mike Staley at the Bronx, um, it was still for me, uh, it was a kind of gold standard of, uh, of, of profile. And uh, I remember when uh, I was watching him make it one time and I was making it with him and um, Dave Greco, who's, who's there, told me something that was really interesting. He said, uh, I was like, well, I mean, I feel it, you know, I feel like in the hot water, I, I, I usually always salt mozzarella first, um, which isn't always, uh, you know, but I feel it just kind of helps it break it down slightly. So I'll salt it. I'll always bring curd to room temperature. Um, I'll salt it slightly. I'll get my water to, I never even use the thermometer, but as soon as it rolls to a boil, I'll turn it off. I'll, I'll fill the bowl, let it hit, and I want to make sure that I, I bring it together, but I start to stretch it. 
before it throws any of the fat. I don't want to see any of the, of the oils in the bowl because I know we need them. I want them in the curd to stay soft. So to make sure that <clears throat> a lot of times, I mean, I've seen different recipes for stretching and things like that where you, know, you want to let it sit and let it sit. I try to work as quickly as I can and retain as much of uh, the fat, the good fat that I can. And then uh, for pizza, you know, um, I got two things, two ways that I do mozzarella. For pizza, I always temper it for a day. Like I'll, I'll, I'll make fresh mozzarella, we'll, I'll press that excess water, and I'll chill it overnight, and then we'll use that for pizza. For mozzarella salads or things like that, we'll make them, you know, we'll finish them at an hour before service, let them rest, and um, um, uh, leave them room temp, and, and happy days. You know, that's kind of that's kind of thing. So I think, like anything else, you know, just just uh, 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 not over manipulating things. Finding out also how you serve them, you know, at temperature and time, um, how you cut it or don't cut it. Um, um, even how you cut the curds, whether you cut them with a, you know, a wire, a knife, cut them into cubes. Um, I like to slice it really, you know, thin versus cubes because, again, I just want to break down uh, the mass quicker. So I was always thinking like larger chunks, you know, um, uh, you're gonna melt, you're gonna break down the outside, and the inside will still be intact. So if you can break everything out uniformly and do smaller batches, you know, so you can do things real quickly. But it's kind of Simple. So we can talk more about it whenever it's grab anytime. Anybody else? Oh, someone in the back. You got it? Hey, this is Nicola. Thanks for sharing your story. I have a question for you. Um, well, I find that new space in LA very inspiring, this combination of, of bread and pizza in one place. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm intent to open something like that in Italy. Yeah. Um, and I'm doing a lot of stage working around, and I see like, a lot of people uh, are working in places like that, right? In the, the server, the people uh, that are cleaning the dishes, cutting, chopping onions. I'm like, what is your, let's say, best advice or, yeah, to keep everybody motivated or like how to deal with the team uh, from top to bottom, let's say. What it's, so, so many people, I find it also a lot of turnover sometimes. It's, find it, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, Incredible. I mean, uh, it's a great question because I think one of the same. Uh, I've got some some of my teams work with me for 25 years or uh, more, you know, and uh, that's probably my greatest achievement in my life is keeping a team together. I would have been very happy not having my own place and being taken care of, um, being part of. I always say, you know, I'd rather be in a great band than be a solo artist, you know, uh, on a, you know, traveling on a bus. So I think one of the things that um, when you're doing a, a restaurant. You know, you try to keep things as connected, you know, whether it's from uh, both sides, the front of house, the back of house, um, uh, the pantry positions, you know, people that you, you're hiring that uh, you find out what, what they want, you know, what's their agenda. They're just here to be, you know, stage for a week and, you know, retrain. I, like for me, I had to stop. I mean, everyone's always welcome to visit. Talk for about seven years ago, I just stopped out of taking stages because it just became too much. It became too much distraction. It became too much of... You didn't know what people wanted, uh, um, and, and it was very difficult because it just, you know, it, it just, it creates sometimes a very transient aspect to our business. And I think, like I said, my rooms and my everything are always open. But when you come to work, it's not a game, you know? It's, it's not a, it ain't school. Like school is like you want to come work and you commit. You know, I've got some of my guys open great pizzerias. One of my guys... Uh, in Tucson, um, Scotty has a great, awesome restaurant called Anello. I support him 2,000%. And you always want to help nurture your team. But I think you have to, it's kind of like being on an airplane where you, you have to put your mask on first before you take care of everybody else. So to take care of your team best, you have to feel that you have what you need, whether it's financially, whether it's your concept, whether it's your, uh, you know, uh, I was fortunate that in my little pizzeria, even though I couldn't add very well, if I had to, I could make your food, cook your food, serve your food, and take your money. I might not be able to give you change, but I could take your money. Yeah. You know, so I think in those aspects, not, I wasn't like, oh, I'm a lawyer, I think it'd be great, it'd be fun to do a restaurant, and I'm gonna hire a chef, and now the chef's gonna go be with me for two months, and he opens another chef down the, you know, it's just, 
you have to create, I think, a very simple family atmosphere and be clear with each other, whatever that you want. And I think from that uh, environment, um, you know, we can start to make some, uh, some family restaurants again. Um, so that's, that's a hope. But uh, best of luck to that. I, I'm, I'm sure it'll be great. Thank you. To your right. Already. Where am I? To your right up front. Oh, that right. Okay, I got you. Hey, Chris, how you doing? What's happening, man? Hey, my name's Charlie. Hey, I'm down in Austin, so I know you were down there not too long ago. Yeah, I'm uh, going for uh, Hot Luck. I'm doing, I'm doing the festival there in May. Oh, very cool. Yeah. So that being said, I'm right there by Barton Springs Mills, which is really cool. Stone James Mill. Brown. I love yeah. him. So I guess my question is this, is I got a small little mobile unit. Um, I want to switch over to Stone Mill Flour. One, it's a little bit more expensive, and then there's a concern for me for the market. It's not white flour that people are used to seeing, and it is a strong, almost more weedy flavor. What is, you know, what is your thought about doing what you want to do versus great what you question. think the market will accept? Great question. Well, first of all, you're in a great city, a fantastic city, and uh, James Brown's one of the best people in our industry as far as, uh, you know, he cares immensely. Well, matter of fact, I'm, I'll be down, uh, I'm doing, uh, I'll be using his flour. Um, I did an event, um, in Houston, and, and James was kind enough. We did a uh, uh, we did a blend um, of uh, a Rouge de Bordeaux um, that he grew um, that was amazing, or his farmers grew in the area. So I think it's more about if you start out saying, "Hey, I'm going to do Neapolitan pizza or this pizza." If you start out saying, "Hey, I want to do a Texas," you know, I did a pizza there called the Texas Wise Guy, which is a take on my own Wise Guy. So we use all all the all the um, all the grains were from Texas. Instead of our sausage, we used the uh, smoke uh, smoke links from from a butcher in Houston, and uh, and then mozzarella from the mozzarella company that we smoke. So I think if you if you're if you're if you want to go that road, you have to know two things. You know, it's just like anything else. It's like if you want to say I want to use all organic, I want to use freshly milled whole grains. Well, you know you're going to add about. 30% to your bottom line right off the bat. So your audience has to be prepared to pay for that. Um, you have to convey that there will be a different flavor profile. It will be more con inconsistent. You have to be okay with that. I'm, I'm kind of okay with that. I mean, as far as um, I think some of the baker's role is to adjust to fluctuation in proteins and things of that nature. But um, uh, the good thing for you is, uh, um, James is, like I said, is one of the great millers. You can also... Um, you know, look at uh, from T85 to T65 to see where uh, the sifting, you know, where sifting for you is that tipping point of, of, of grain retention and balance. Um, so it doesn't affect flavor profiles. Like, for instance, um, some of the whole grains might not be great uh, marriage for, like if you, if you have your mind a, a pizza margarita and you want to use rye and rouge de Bordeaux, those might not work together. So I think you have to find uh, what you want to do, identify it, and uh, um, I think it'll, I, I know what, you're, you're in a good place. Uh, you're with a good guy. I think it's building that relationship together with James, uh, doing some testing on it, and then uh, come up with a number for your, for your customers that makes sense to you, and hopefully they'll, they'll buy into it. So anyway. Anybody, anybody else? Is that it? Go, oh, we got it, one more? All right, we'll do one more. I don't... Um, I've been studying making pizza, and every person I see, they've got a little different way of making their dough, and uh, I'm just kind of frustrated. How do you make your dough? What? <laughs> that's, that's a good question. What? I'll tell you this right now, it's a little bit like playing golf, or baseball, I would say. Everyone has a little different swing, but in the zone, they all, the bat always hits the ball in the same spot. So where you, um, how I make my dough, is our dough is about 74% hydration. Fermentation time in a perfect world is around 30, 36 hours. I mean, you know, in balance. But sometimes I'm gonna have to push it in a restaurant because you know we had a busier lunch the 14 hours, so you you might leave it out at ambient temperature longer. You're const so we're constantly on a restaurant scale, dealing with there's no perfect world, so we've got to adjust. 
push things, use ice water because it's summer, uh, you know. Uh, but if I was home, um, you know, it's it's. I mean, it's pretty. Uh, I mean, it's a pretty simple process for me. It's you know, uh, if I'm we do two types of breads or doughs. We do one like all sourdough, and then we do one where I'll use like old school, um, uh, just uh, small percentage of, uh, of baker's yeast, sea salt, organic flour. In my case, I like, you know, I want a stronger tooth. I'll use something, whether it's from Karen Springs or, uh, um, or from Central Milling, uh, back in the day, Justo's, uh, something higher profile, we, we blend it with a little bit of softer grain sometimes, like uh, Sonoran white wheat. So it's finding that toothiness that you like. So if you said, I want that New York kind of chewy, then you want a, a stronger protein, like something around 13.5 to almost 14%. If that's too tough for you, which is personal, then you say, well, I want to back down. I'll look for another varietal. But um, I mean, how you make it is, is, is basically the same. It doesn't matter if you put, for me, water in first, water in last. You know, I've, I've forgotten salt and mix it into like, it's incredibly forgiving. So if you're having an issue, grab me today. We can talk more about it. I mean, we'll try to figure out, we'll troubleshoot your particular issue. But, but don't be confused by everybody having this. Everyone makes it the same, basically. I mean, it's not really a secret other when it gets there. So I'm saying at the end of the day, if hydrations are the same or the way fermentations are, are the same. Now, we can screw it up by leaving something out. But, but there's, not, there's no really... Um, anyway, try to grab me later and we'll, we'll tell me this specific problem that you're having and we'll, we'll try to we'll try to nail it. Okay? okay? Thank you. All right. Cool. Good luck with that. One more to the right. Okay, one more. We'll do one more. Chris? Yes. I'm over here. Oh, to that right again. I, could be quiet. I keep a little down on the people's right. Okay. As uh, during your presentation I was doing a hand mix. Yeah. Which I couldn't I needed to do it before uh, uh, starting the day and I was wondering if I could have your hand print as a papal blissom. Oh, come on, man. Yeah, brother, come on. It's the highlight of my day here. Yeah, look at that. Beautiful. Oh, it feels nice. Nice and happy. Thank you. God bless you. Uh, uh, always feels good to get in some dough, for sure. Always gets to. Um, is that it? You want me to do I can do one more, but it's quick. Is that Going once, going twice. Oh, right here? Okay. Where are we at? Okay, yes. Okay. He's coming now. I hope any of this was okay. Uh, I, I was stressed about it a little bit, but I hope everybody enjoyed it. Yeah. All right. Yes. Thank you. No. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> No, um, I just want to say thank you for um, inspiring me and listening to your story. I, I would like to share my story, like kind of similar to you. Okay. Um, we're in Tampa and um, we just opened our business like probably a, a year ago. And seven, seven months after um, we opened the business, it was like um, Money Magazine. And it is not that magazine. They pick us as number one in Florida. Mm -hmm. And this is without experience in the restaurant business, in pizza business. Mm -hmm. And uh, my, my inspiration was my mom. Because before she died, I was, I was only like 11 years old. And I wasn't allowed to say goodbye to her because she was in the ICU. So I know that she was like, um, she wanted to open a little kitchenette. And I promised her right there, I said, someday I'm going to fulfill that dream of hers, and it's going to be the best. I told, I told her, like, you know. And then after that, I just, um, I'm sorry. <laughs> but um, uh, so 30 years later, I opened the business. And I, I, I took her recipe, my mom's recipe, and being married to an Italian, I combined my mother-in-law's recipe and my mom's recipe was, a, was Filipino, I'm Filipino. And then um, everybody just loves the, the, the fusion style. And um, 
and it's just like um, I that's like my inspiration of um, now we're like you know happy and this is my first thing in the convention well good that's good well I'm happy for you that's a beautiful that's a beautiful story um, I'm sure your mother's very proud of you and uh, and your family it's uh that's that that's what it's all about Amen to that. Amen to that. Well, on that note of passion and love, uh, I wish you all a happy uh, expo, and I'm, I'm grateful to each and every one of you. Thank you very much. Thank you.